Good evening, I'm Tara Gannat. Welcome to the studio. And in tonight's show. Um, yeah. And in tonight's show. What we're going to do is mount this gearbox, which is um, only partially put in place. I'm also just going to measure the length of a push rod, which I was going to sort of do in between, but I never got around to it. Uh, mainly because I'm reading a book. Well, <laughs> I'm reading a series of books, 21 in total, you know, all together, of which I've read about 10, 12 or so, so far. Right, so that's probably going to be in inches. That's millimetres. And these are the wrong glasses to do this with. And I checked just recently, my vision hasn't changed significantly since the last time, which is quite, uh, quite good. 928 millimetres. But I guess if I do that, that might be too much. Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a millimetre. That's uh, what's that? Eight point four. So let's see what this one is. Seventeen point four. Sixteen point seven. Well, uh, roughly off the top of my head, that makes it roughly the right length. So we'll leave one slightly long, one slightly short. And I shall just take that back out of there. It will go flat in here. They, they're always using power. Okay, they don't use a lot of power, but they are always using power. Okay, must be something about um, thread sizes on the back for some reason, because Whitworth is a um, thread size. Okay, well, just me feeling a bit, uh, I'm just feeling a bit tired today. So let's see how, you see how, uh, see how far we get with this. So I'm going to need the dry shaft, the pop shaft. Otherwise known as the propeller shaft. Which will go from the gearbox to the, the back axle, which I need for this and I'm going to need four BC2 nuts and then I'll be able to mount the gearbox well I am feeling tired tonight I wasn't until I went live and now I'm just feeling whoa that's um, One. Two. Three. Four. They're the four that I need.
I will need some thread lock we will um, sort that in a moment so <laughs> I've been caught like this before so that has to go in first uh, it's by it's, I was gonna say it's bi-directional it can go in either way otherwise if you don't put that in first you can't get it in once you bolt this down you can't get that shaft out and I've just realized if I want to change the motor in my other truck I've got to take the gearbox out completely hmm because you're going to take it apart in order to get the screws that let you take the watch off yeah thread lock to change the subject completely since this is metal on metal Okay, well I've kept thread lock off the manual so far and now I've just failed and that sorry uh, sorry you can't see but I am trying to get a screw to go in the hole and it is fighting me there we go I hate making a mess of things like books and stuff like that. I uh, can't help it in this particular case, but there we go. And I don't quite know why that is dri dripping out all over the place. Since I've got thread lock all over the desk, well not all over the desk, but on the desk, I might as well make use of it. Before I wipe it up. That is a little tip by the way sometimes when you uh, if you have a problem there's two things you can do actually is just thinking about it um what i did was put the screwdriver on the screw on the end of the screwdriver and hold it in place with my nail so that i only have to get one finger and it becomes an extension of the screwdriver the other thing you could do is put something like thread lock on the end which would tend to hold the nut in place but not very well and um then uh, the third one which put something like blue tack on the end just a little bit which will hold the screw in place I, I had to read that twice uh, Wolfie uh, you mean that you've disbanded hopefully <laughs> and not literally <laughs> I wasn't sure I'd read that right the first time It has disbanded. Oh, okay. I was getting worried then, you know, especially since I misread it to start with. Um, have they decided that they weren't good enough to continue, or is it just something else that's uh, gone on? Now then. Okay, so they're the same and those two are the same there. Right. 
what I could do with doing now actually is putting on those two power connectors. catalog okay it is a long time since this is a truck puller motor but um, oh, clutches and back plates no oh, nitro engines as well it's a long time since I've run a, uh, a nitro the nitro engines um, nitro methane I can't think it was um, yeah basically um, glow fuel with an additive to make it run hotter um, but the, uh, that's interesting, I'll have a skip through that later on. The LRP stuff. Um, what's that? Just a piece of card with it in. Oh, okay. So this is a 6000 RPM 48 watt motor. Wow. This one runs at 12 volts. So 4 amps at 12 volts full power. I won't be running at full power. That's a little bit funny. That is a little bit funny, Wolfie. Okay, I can say these um, these fittings here are quite uh, quite substantial. I should have put these on before I put the motor in. That would have been a heck of a lot easier. Okay, it's going to be awkward. So do they all think they can do better somewhere else or are they actually just giving up? <laughs> That's not quite all the way down. I want this to seat all the way down. Well, I think it's going to vibrate off but I want to make, make sure it doesn't. Is it all the way down? Well, it's not going any further, so it'll have to be. Okay. Blue is minus, but and yellow is positive, but it doesn't really matter. I suggest the other one will go down further as well if I can find something to press with it. There we go. So those will actually go and mate with a speed controller. I happen to have one of here. It doesn't fantastically need anything uh, fancy as a speed controller. It needs one that will handle power. This one will do that. This one has a brake uh, and reverse. It's also auto calibrating, so it's sort of an easy um, thing for this this 
for these sorts of models. Um, interestingly, it has a yellow and a blue lead. Must be a convention for DC motors. I don't know. I noticed it was. Whether they'll actually match or not, I don't know. Um, if you go forward on your control and this goes backwards, you just flip the two. Whether I tick them off or not, so I have a blue wire to a blue wire just because. Don't know. We'll get that out later. Don't need it yet. Um, did I tighten those screws up? I think I did. If I didn't, I just did. Okay, so let me just get rid of this thread lock that's now on my bench here. It's started to dry. Come on, don't leave a mark on my desk. I do not like that happening. It has marginally stained the desk. I don't think that's very friendly of it. Why? Two things. What 3D drawing? And why is it not going to happen? <laughs> oh, you mean you doing 3D drawings? Uh, oh, yes, that's right, it's there. So, what I've now got to do. You know what, that servo, I think, is in backwards, it is. So I've got to take the servo out. Hmm. Being mounted 180 degrees in the carrier the wrong way around. Right, well, I have no choice, it has to come out. I can't, um, I can't make it work otherwise. Oh, the customer, oh, right. That's irritating, isn't it, when a customer doesn't reply. They don't bother saying no, thank you, or anything like that, they just don't reply. Well, there'll be another chance at some point in the future, somewhere, sometime, and okay. How do I do this? And that won't actually come out of there. So now I'm trying to work out how to get this servo out of here without dismantling half of the chassis. 